So, it's 2008. You're up too late on a school night scrolling on your phone under the covers. Then, all of a sudden, this image lights up your screen. Now, this image scared me so bad as a kid. Like, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, it really scared me. And it's far from the only one around this time on the internet. From the Russian sleep experiment, Smile Dog, and of course our main focus today, Jeff the Killer, these scary stories were propelled into fame by their disturbing images that got sent with them. Not to mention, all of the people sharing it to scare friends, random people online, you watching the video, me, but how did this one story dominate the internet for so long and scare our entire generation? Let's talk about it. Before we get into how this guy got burned into the minds of our generation, let's go over a summary of his backstory. But if you're like me and you haven't read it in over a decade, I want to know what you think in the comments down below. Why did this story get so popular and did it actually scare you? But anyways, Gather around the fireside, and let's read this masterpiece of a story. <laughs> the story begins with a teen recalling his near-death experience with Jeff to the news. He saw his terrifying face, got attacked after hearing the catchphrase, go to sleep, and was saved just in time by the police before Jeff jumps out the window and escapes like Jason Bourne. We then cut to a 13-year-old Jeff, his brother Lou, and his parents moving to a new neighborhood. They get invited to a birthday party and head off to school. Jeff notices that he's getting these weird feelings mentally, but he brushes them off. And a bully, who is literally described, I kid you not, as wearing an Aeropostale shirt in ripped jeans with his two sidekicks out of Dumb and Dumber, circled Jeff and his little brother at the bus stop. They pull a knife out and try to tax him, as if they're in Compton instead of an upper middle class neighborhood, and Jeff gets that weird urge again, and once again, as if he is John Wick Jr., attacks these three bullies, disarms them, stabs them in their arms, and then runs away. The next day, the cops show up and Lou tells them he did it to spare Jeff from punishment. The cops, in a total sensical manner, with no trial or evidence or anything, sentence him on the spot to one year in juvie, with the no argument from his parents and the only one upset by it is Jeff. He takes it really poorly and becomes depressed and they talk about him as if he is dead. Uh, I don't know why they couldn't visit him, but they're acting like he passed away. But uh, fast forward to the birthday party and Jeff is finally having fun again, finally being a kid. And then the three bullies skateboard into the backyard, hold all of the children and the parents at gunpoint, and say they want to beat up Jeff as payback for getting beat up in the first place. And yes, they are all preteens. Jeff then does his usual super soldier thing and punches the head bully in the heart, causing it to stop immediately for him to cough up blood and then beats him even more till he dies on the spot. He then fights the other two, killing one with a towel holder, before the third covers him in bleach and vodka and lights him on fire. Jeff, while on fire, kills him with the towel holder, goes outside so everyone can see him, and blacks out. He then wakes up at the hospital, and after several weeks he removes the bandages from his face. His friends and family are all there watching, waiting to see what he's going to look like. And his family is disgusted. He's deformed, he's burned, the bleach, the fire, the alcohol, not good for him, but Jeff couldn't be happier. He goes and looks in the mirror, and he laughs maniacally, telling the doctors he's perfect now. His family is terrified, and they don't want to bring him home, but the doctors reassure them that yelling about your new disfigured face being perfect for your serial killer personality you discovered is a common symptom of ibuprofen. But once that's cleared up, Jeff goes home, burns his own eyelids off so he can always see his new face, carves an exact copy of the Joker smile, and then murders his entire family. But before he kills his little brother, he finally comes up with his signature catchphrase, go to sleep. Now that we know who Jeff the Killer is, how did this cliche, mild, and I'm sorry to use it, but mid-serial killer story get to be a name passed around school lunches everywhere? Now, 
Like I said, Jeff the Killer originated in 2008. The first mention of him, though, was on the website Newgrounds. If you're not familiar with it, it's something that exists today. They got Flash games, uh, animations. Uh, it's still pretty popular, I think. But what's interesting is, unlike a lot of these, he started off as an image instead of a story. So, the image released with several backstories associated with it. Uh, one popular one was accidentally bleaching his face, cleaning a bathtub, and then he just became psychotic. Uh, he was burned in a fire on accident, and then once again, the trauma made him go become a serial killer. And then the story we discussed earlier, obviously the most popular one that most people know. So, now... The interesting thing about this is that all the different sources add to the mystery because the creator of the story we just read didn't even know where the image originated or if it was real or fake. Uh, we didn't really have Chad GPT and AI back then to generate these images if you're a Chen Alpha watching this. So most of these things, it was either you're super good at Photoshop, which is still relatively new, or this is a real guy that somehow looks like that. And... At this time, uh, I mean, like I said, the internet was a new place, at least the internet we know today. A lot of parents were letting their kids get on it for the first time, supervision was low at best, and with new popular websites such as creepypasta forums and YouTube coming out, kids and teens had essentially free reign to run into whatever disturbing content they could find. I was definitely included in this group and saw things I should not have been seeing as a kid or probably ever, and I'm sure many of you, if not almost all of you, can relate to that. Now, the main thing that makes a story popular is a hook, especially when that hook is something that will stick with the audience that sees it, which at the time is mostly children. A disfigured, terrifying face popping up on our screens immediately leads people to find the origin of the image, and when most people found a subpar scary story is the only link to it, it began a witch hunt to figure out what this image was. So, not only were people spamming Jeff the Killer to their friends, family, and randoms online, they were also trying to dig deeper, find any new story associated with it that would just give a clue or just some small hint to the origin. It's not obvious by now, what makes the story so popular is the image itself. Jeff the Killer peaked in popularity in 2014, which is crazy to think about considering that means it had been gaining popularity and traction for six years straight. Something that seems nearly impossible in the current internet culture where things usually explode and fizzle out within weeks at most. What kept it alive was an active fan base split into groups who wanted to find the image's origin, people who actually believed this story somehow, and fans creating fanfiction, character art, and obsessing over this character for reasons I cannot and will not comprehend. Actually, side note, if you're one of these people that is obsessed with Jeff the Killer, please leave a comment down below and tell me why. <laughs> but... Now, 10 years later, here we are still talking about it, and it's moved on to terrifying Generation Alpha today. Now, I thought leaving it off on saying that this short, like, image scary story thing is only popular because of some mysterious, terrifying image that no one knows the origins of is like... Not only a cliffhanger, but kind of a letdown. So this is going to be a short section about the hunt for the original image. And it is a crazy story. It's an over a decade long manhunt that has been attempted by tens of thousands of people. All the way to the point of literal bounties for life changing amounts of money have been put out as if this is an actual serial killer. But I'm not going to go through the incredibly complicated like whole timeline of it. I'm going to take you through the theory that I personally believe. This is my opinion. This is not 100% fact, but I did spend a lot of time looking into this. I'm not going to lie. And I'm pretty sure this is it. Okay. So around the time the story came out, there was a trend or a meme in Japan called Pretty Face. And it was spreading all over early Japanese social media. It consisted of young women coating their faces in white powder, smiling creepy, putting the camera right next to their face, and then spamming it everywhere they could. 
a specific woman did this, posted it to the American populated 4chan, and you won't be surprised by what happened next because it's 4chan, but in typical fashion, they had a competition to make the woman look as disturbing as possible because she was chubby, and somehow produced the image for Jeff the Killer. Here's the original picture so you can see the resemblance. After this, I'm assuming the original Newgrounds poster most likely found the image, called it Jeff the Killer, added a little backstory there, and now here we are talking about it today, and all the fanfiction, not great movie adaptations, and all these things are just cause some assholes on the internet decided to mess around with the picture. But. Thank you everyone for watching, and let me know if you want more content like this in the future instead of just strictly gaming stuff, but thank you so much, and I hope to see you in the next one.